This is a continuation of section 7.3, um, binomial radicals. So what we're going to work on now is multiplying them and then dividing them. So first things first, we're going to start off with a problem like this and like that. So I'll review a little bit. So hopefully you remember what to do here. This is the idea of distributing. So 3 times x would be 3x. And then we also have to multiply the 3 with the 4, so we'd say plus 12. This one would be like from chapter 5, so we're going to distribute the x, and then we'll distribute the 3. So x times x would be x squared, x times 4 would be 4x, then we distribute the 3, 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 4, 12. And then in this case we have like terms there in the middle that we can put together. Okay, so distributing and then a double distributing or foiling. So what we're going to do here though is we're going to apply the idea. So when I do a problem like this, it's the same as this, the same process. Okay, we just got to be a little bit more careful on the number parts of this, but it's very similar. So first thing first, we're going to, this problem is like this one. We're going to take the, neg or the square root of 3 there and distribute it. Square root of 3 times x. Uh, typically when you have a square root, you write it second like this. Um, most of the time when you add numbers, we write the number first. Um, other than if it's a square root, because typically you put it second, just because if you do it first, it's not clear sometimes like if that x is underneath it or not. Um, is it you know square root of three x or is it square root of three times x? So that's why you usually put the x in front. Okay, because it's it's a little bit ambiguous as far as is it square root of three x or square root of three times x. So put the variable first if that happens like that, then it's clear that the square root of three is the only the three is the only thing underneath. So this times this, but then we also have to do square root of 3 times square root of 7. Because those are both numbers that are underneath the square root, we can multiply them together. 3 times 7 is 21, and so that would be my answer. We would want to check to see if we can simplify the 21. I'll just tell you in this case that we cannot. If I divide 21 by 2, um, it's 10.5, so our only option would be t um, dividing 21 by 9 or 4, and neither of them will divide into 21. So then we'd be done. Uh, this one here. Very similar to this one, how we distributed through one at a time. So same idea with this one. We're going to multiply the square root of 3 with the square root of 3. If you remember the shortcut, technically remember that's, that's 3. But if you write square root of 9, that's fine. Square root of 3 times 4, square root of 5. Okay, so if you're multiplying that, the 4 will just be there. The 4 is just going to hang out because there's no numbers on the outside. But we are going to multiply the 3 with the 5. Put it underneath the square root. Then we're going to distribute the, the um, square root of 5. So square root of 5 times square root of 3, we'll multiply those numbers because they're underneath. Square root of 15. And square root of 5 times 4 square root of 5. Again, that 4 will just kind of be there. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 would be square root of 25. Or if you remember your shortcut, that would just be 5. Okay, um, so to simplify them, square root of 9 is 3. Uh, square root of 25 there is 5. So this actually turns into 4 times 5 there, which is 20. Okay, so we can put the 3 with the 20. So our final answer that we put the 3 with the 20 and get 23. And then these, like we were doing earlier in this section, uh, because they happen to be the same type of radical, square root of 15, square root of 15, we can take our numbers in front and add them together. We have to assume that that's 1. So 4 plus 1 would get me 5, 5 square root of 15. So that, to start off with, supplies to that. Um, now, this is what I was kind of showing you a little bit before. Uh, if you have a square root times itself, if you wanted to, you could just make that 3 right there. If you want to do this, when you do this times this, do five, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5, and multiply that by 20, or by 4 to get 20. Okay, save a little bit of time if you'd wanted to. Um, so, a little bit of time saver, it's one step save. Okay, so let's try a couple of those. So if I look at this one here, so remember that power 2, first of all, remember when you have a plus sign or a minus sign on the inside, uh, you cannot square square and be done. Remember what that means is that power 2 is being applied to the thing directly in front of it. Directly in front of it is the parentheses. So there are two sets of parentheses. One set. Two sets. Okay, so write it like that. Now we'll distribute 3. Square root of 2 times square root of 2. I'm going to use my shortcut this time. Any square root times itself is the number. Square root of 2 times that negative 3 square root of 3. So the negative 3 will just be there. Square root of 2 times square root of 3 is square root of 6. Then we're going to distribute the negative 3 square root of 3. So negative 3 square root of 3 times square root of 2. This again, negative 3 will just be there. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 will be square root of 6. And then to finish up, the square root of 3 with this. Okay, so this one I might write out just because it's a little bit more complicated. Negative 3 times negative 3. Well, negative times negative is positive. 3 times 3 is 9. And then I add the square root of 3 times square root of 3. If I use my shortcut with that, 
square root times itself is the number. So that's what that, that the last piece would be. So that was that negative 3 square root of 3 times negative 3 square root of 3. If you did not use your shortcut, it would be 9, because negative 3 times negative 3. So that square root of 9, square root of 9 is 3. Okay, so that's what I did to get that. From here, we want to do a little bit of cleaning up. I can now do this, this 9 times 3. If I just want to get 27, that's fine. And then we'll put, look for like terms that we can put together. The 2, I can add with the 27. They're just numbers. So 29. These are the same radical here. They're both square roots of 6. So I can take my numbers and put them together. Negative 3 and negative 3. If I owe 3 and owe 3, I owe 6. Square root of 6 just comes along. And that's my final answer. Okay, let's try another one. Make sure we're okay with this. So let's, uh, again, we'll distribute through. So 2 times the 2, those are regular numbers. We can multiply them. Square root of 5 times square root of 5, I'm going to use my shortcut. So I'm just going to write 4 times 5, though, for now. It'll turn to 20 here in a minute, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. Okay, then we're going to do 2 square root of 5 times that negative 7, or square root of negative 7. Oh, sorry, negative square root of 7. So 2 times the negative will be a negative 2. Square root of 5 times square root of 7, square root of 35. So that's done. Now I'm going to distribute the negative 7. So negative 7 times 2 square root of 5, well, it's positive. The 2 will just be there. Square root of 7 times square root of 5 is 35, underneath the square root. Then we have one more to do. This times this. Positive times negative, negative. Square root of 7 times square root of 7 is just 7. Square root of 49, if you want to do it the long way, and square root of 49 is 7. Okay, um, this happened to be two regular numbers, so I'm going to multiply them now too. 4 times 5 is 20. Okay, so now I'm going to start simplifying it here. So 20 minus 7, that's 13. And then if I look at these, these actually happen to cancel out. If I owe 2 and I have 2, they're gone. So it ends up just being 13. So this last section, or this last problem here I did actually was illustrating an important idea. So this is called a conjugate. So you may have remembered me from the previous section mentioning what a con or mentioning a conjugate, but I didn't really explain what it was. Um, here's where it's coming now. So the idea here is, is if, if I have something like this, if I have basically the same idea but one is being added here and one is being subtracted, but everything else is the same. Those are conjugates of each other. So if you change this operation idea right here, what's going to happen is that the square root will cancel out. Okay, you won't have any square roots ever if you have a, you know, a square root plus a square root and then a, the same square root minus the second square root. Okay, they will always cancel all the square roots out. So the conjugate idea is going to be a very important idea for when we're trying to simplify division of radicals when our other methods didn't work. Okay, so we had three other options with this. If they don't work, this is our only option. So for example, like this one, our other division options don't work. Um, and as soon as we see a plus sign in there or a minus sign in there, there's really nothing we can do. We have to do a conjugate. Okay, so when we see a plus sign in our operation idea, when not everything is being multiplied or divided, we have to use conjugate. So the idea here is we're looking at this denominator here. It's 3 plus 2 square root of 5. So what I'm going to do then is multiply the bottom by the conjugate. So everything is going to stay the same of what it is, but because this is addition here, this will be subtraction. That's the only difference. I will have to multiply the top, so I'm just going to throw it in there, but I'll deal with that later. So first things first, I'm going to multiply out the bottom. If I do this, 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times that negative 2 square root of 3, I'm going to multiply the numbers. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Throw the 5 underneath the square root. Then I'm going to distribute the 2 square root of 5 to the 3. So that'll be positive 6 square root of 5. And then to finish off, I'm going to go this 2 square root of 5 times square root of 5. The 2 will just be there. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. And notice how it'll be a subtraction. The reason why is because that's positive and that's negative. Okay, so this 2 times 5, what I can do then is simplify that out, make that 10. And again, these middle two terms here, I have a minus 6 square root of 5 and a plus square root of 6, 6 square root of 5. Those will cancel out. They will always cancel out. Okay, so feel free to get rid of those. And in fact, so then you, if you recognize that, you actually don't have to do that. You can just multiply the first with the first. This is only if you have conjugates, so, and the last with the last. Okay, only though if they're conjugates. And that's really what's going to happen, because the middle two will always cancel out. So the bottom becomes negative one once we're done. What we'll have to do now is distribute this top through. So if I do that, uh, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times the second piece. Um, I actually made a mistake on this one. So 4 times 2, this should have been 8 right here. Okay, so this should have been 8. 
Sorry about that. And then I can divide both of them then by negative 1. So 12 divided by negative 1, negative 12. That negative 8 divided by negative 1 would be plus 8 squared by 5. Um, and that would be what I do. Um, now, if you didn't want to multiply this out, you don't have to. If you had left it as 4 parentheses 3 minus 2 square root of 5 over negative 1, that's fine. You can do it like that. And then what you want to do, though, is divide this part. Okay, so we would divide that out and then distribute through that sign. You get the same answer. Okay, so if it's just a, a distributing idea, you might want to. However, if it's something like this one, where it's 14 minus 5 square root of 3, when I multiply the bottom by the conjugate, it's going to get messy for the top. So if you just wanted to leave it um, and don't multiply at the top, that's fine. Okay, so let's try that one just real quick. 14 minus 5 square root of 3 over square root of 3 minus 5. So anytime you see a plus sign and a minus sign, it's a great idea to use parentheses around this. We'll see this again in Chapter 9, uh, but it's a good idea that anytime you have plus signs or minus signs, put parentheses around them when you're trying to divide. It helps you to um, not cancel out things that you can't. But we got to multiply the bottom by the conjugate, so I'm just going to change that sign right there. And that's it. I'll also have to multiply the top, but I'm not going to physically multiply the top. Okay, so that's what I got. I'm going to multiply at the bottom. 4 square root of 3 times 4 square root of 3. I'm going to multiply the numbers. 4 times 4 is 16. Square root of 3 times square root of 3, shortcut, is 3. If I do the whole thing out, I would multiply that. I'd multiply the 4 with the 5. That's going to be 20. Square root of 3 comes along. Then I'm going to distribute this negative 5. So negative 5 times this 4 square root of 3, that'll be negative 20 square root of 3. And again, notice these are opposites of each other. And finally, negative 5 times 5. So negative times positive, negative. 5 times 5, 25. Like before, when I add these conjugates, these middle two will cancel out. So we're going to have to do then the 16 times 3 and then subtract 25. So 16 times 3 is 48. If we subtract 25, we get 23. So our final answer, we'll have 23 in the top and the bottom. And then if you wanted to multiply on the top, you can, but I'm, I'm okay if you just leave it how it is. So 14, like that, 4 square root of 3 plus 5. If you leave it like that, I'm good with that. But I do want you to recognize that the bottom will clean up. So do clean up the bottom, because I don't want any square roots in the bottom. If you have a square root in the top, that's fine. But you cannot have a square root or any type of radical in the denominator.